Hey there, my name is Provis, and welcome back to more Surviving Mars Below and Beyond in New Ulm. We are just about ready to wrap this series up, I do believe. We're back to being self-sufficient on crucial resources, including, by the way, food. Holy crud, we have a lot of food. <laughs> These open farms, um, if you can get the uh, soil quality up and some moisture out here, uh, really powerful, it turns out. So we are, we are ramping up, it looks like 2,000 food available for harvest in this farm. <laughs> That's a lot. That is a lot. So I think uh, maybe we can finally start getting rid of some of these farms here. I might just go ahead and refab up at least a couple of these things. Because who needs these kinds of jobs? But that does mean I have no idea what to do with all these folks, except for perhaps employ all my people in workshops. So yeah, we're in that wonderful stage of the game where so much is automated and we have so many resources that basically no one even has to work. Or only a few do. Just some engineers, basically. So that's a good position to be in. Most of the planet is successfully terraformed at this point. We could say that approximately eh, about 60% of the planet has been terraformed. It's certainly looking pretty good. Only thing we're really going to be missing is vegetation, but that's partly because I hate vegetation and I think it is a very long and arduous process that stops around 80% and the only way to continue is to literally be doing these planetary projects. A little annoying, so we're not going to be bothering with any of that. What I do want to do in this video to wrap up the series is actually construct an underground base. That's something we've talked about doing for the entire game, literally this entire campaign, and I want to actually follow through. Now, in order to make that work, I did have to complete a few more uh, researches, some few more technologies, including such things as underground psych studies, because apparently your people do lose sanity constantly every day if they are living and working underground, but we were able to deal with some of that. And there's a few other little things here and there that certainly are going to be helpful. Um, signal boosters, we just basically increase the range of all of our drone hubs and stuff, that's always nice. Yeah, lots of good stuff down here. But now that we are having another 100 or so exotic minerals being delivered, so we're almost up to 300, this means we should absolutely get down to the underground, construct a base, move some people down there, and see exactly how this is going to work. I am a little bit wary of the underground, mainly because if you do go down there, you are probably going to construct things that are going to require regular exotic minerals for maintenance. And that would mean that in order to live underground, you have to be reliably going to asteroids all the time. Which can get a little tedious if you're the kind of person who already doesn't like having to jump between maps. If you go underground, you just guarantee you have to keep playing the asteroid game. So, kind of up to you whether you think that's going to be worth it or not. I am wondering if we can bypass some of that using the Triple Electric Scrubbers. So we're going to test that out today and see if, let's say, placing down some support struts with us, uh, scrubbers prevents any maintenance needs there. And maybe we can greatly reduce the numbers required and make it into just an electronics thing. Which would be pretty cool, if so. Oh, and we apparently have just got an achievement. Space Explorer for finishing all of the recon and expansion techs. Well, that's exciting. I apparently have finished up all of the research here. So the only things that I think are really going to be left are these two techs followed by just repeatable tech and nothing else. So yeah, now we can just use our extreme amounts of research to just get tons and tons of funding from the planet. And I really don't need any of that, so that's going to be fun. Why are you guys delivering stuff down to the elevator? Did I ask for this? No, but apparently, apparently we are in fact delivering some resources from the elevator up here. Oh. But the elevator's off. How is that working? I have no idea. But the drone hubs are working, so that's what I cared about. Let's get the elevator repaired. Should take only a second. And then we can go ahead and start shipping stuff down below. And we're going to need a lot of stuff. Let's make sure we also bring over a depot for some exotic minerals, keeping that far away from the fuel. Oh, and another thing that I did up over here is I constructed an extra uh, shuttle hub. Not because I actually have any use for it right now, but because I want to have a simple prefab that I can send down, and it'll make it a lot easier than managing all of the resources. I'm going to do the exact same thing with a fusion reactor, for example. Let's go ahead and do that, and then maybe a power accumulator. And the reason I'm doing these, again, just prefabs. I can send them down to the underground, and I don't have to send all the resources and micromanage their transport. This is going to be way easier to control. I wish there was a button that I could click that would increase this in 10 increments rather than one at a time. Because uh, if I want to build that bottomless pit lab we already established, I need to send like 150 minerals down there. Which is a lot, which means a lot of unnecessary clicking on my end, which means my hand is going to hurt. Oh yeah, I also am building up another wonder over here, the excavator, which means we're not going to have any more problems as far as passive concrete production. Why can't I build power out here? 
It says it's unconnected. Duly noted. Um, how dost I give power if I'm not allowed to do this? Wait, for real though. Actually, how do I power you? Uh, maybe I have to build power over here. You know what? I'll bet you that's where I have to build power. Hang on. Let's get a cable connected like this or something. Oh, there it is. Okay, and I forgot we can place these down instantly. Oh, yeah. That breakthrough tech is certainly going to be helpful. What I was really hoping for as far as breakthrough techs was the one where you can um, place down mining extractors without needing any people to work it because that's a really convenient thing to use, but oh well. Uh, what does it cost to improve this? Oh, yeah, another couple hundred machine parts or so. All right, we'll go ahead and give you at least one upgrade. Make sure we're producing 75 concrete passively per soul in this approximate area. No problem at all. And then, yeah, let's go ahead and pack both of these up to get ready to send down to the underground. Oh, we successfully planted a tree on the planet somewhere. Oh, that's exciting. Where? Where is tree? Wish it would let me actually zoom in and find the dang thing, but apparently we finally have some. It's a good sign. It means that vegetation is definitely going up if we're now able to start increasing the soil by a lot. Mixed trees are usually the way to go if you can, but you have to have lots of water and atmosphere to make that work. Good news, we have both of those. So somewhere there are trees. Hopefully when we come back, we're gonna find a lot more. Wait, we got another breakthrough? Oh, dude, I didn't even know you could go beyond this list. Well, we found giant crops. <laughs> um, that means we can have absolutely massive apples and ears of corn. Cool, our food production just went even higher. Now, unfortunately, it is going to take me a very long time to load all my materials up over here in the elevator. I mean, my shuttles are working overtime trying to deliver everything I've requested. There is a lot to go, as you can see. And this is only just kind of a baseline set of resources. I don't expect that I'm going to have uh, nearly enough just from delivering all this stuff. It's going to be a little while. It's going to be a little while. But down to the underground, I suppose one thing we can do is make sure we set up some additional um, depots and maybe finally build up a drone hub. Okay, let's go ahead and get this shuttle hub set up, I think, um, since we should have everything we need at this point. So I'll place you right over there, plus your very own Sterling engine, which ensures that this thing will be powered at all times, no risk to me. Giant crops is done. All right, cool. That's nice. So this is going to give me the ability to start really flying resources around, and this is going to make logistics so much easier. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and make sure we max out the number of shuttles we can have here, which is going to cost a lot, but... Uh, I think these guys can fly over cave-ins, which is great. Oh, look, we've actually already built our first support strut. So this is going to cost some, um, it's going to cost me some exotic minerals in maintenance. But I did note that there were some cave-ins here that were blocking me. So I'm preemptively placing this to try and keep this tunnel nice and clear. There might also be a need for one up over in this direction, but we'll play that one a little bit more by ear. And then up in this direction, we've already set up a couple of support struts here. So what I think I want to do is try to place down an underground dome. Now, you can't have medium-sized domes, unfortunately, only regular-sized ones. But if I place one right up over here, I think, this will be nicely protected by both of the support struts, and it still leaves plenty of room to do other stuff. So let's go ahead and place you right over here. We're going to need to get life support set up, of course. That's still very crucial. Uh, where's the nearest water supply? One way down over here. Okay. We need to keep an eye on this area to make sure that there's no cabins that can occur here, but we'll have to set up a water extractor and power and stuff all the way over here. There's a lot to do. All right, there's a lot to do, but I'm looking forward to doing it. Oh, see? Okay, I just clicked here. There was an underground Mars quake, and it looks like it did fire off right where the strut is located. Now, unfortunately, this also means that apparently it needs repairs. Now, let's see. That's something I didn't know. You actually have to repair this every time there is a Mars quake that would impact it. That's going to get annoying in the sense that I have to actually keep a small stockpile of exotic minerals nearby. Actually, no, I don't, apparently, in this case. Because my drone hub over here actually has a fantastic range with that plus 15 hex extension. So we don't need this over here anymore. Looks like they can just go ahead and repair it. Good, but I'm glad I placed this because that actually would have prevented me from moving anybody over. Ah, and we just hit 80% atmosphere, which means no more meteor storms are going to be a thing. So I think at this point I've eliminated all natural disasters except for Mars quakes, which is kind of cool. The ninth planet... What? We found another planet in the solar system? Wait a minute. Ninth planet. What happened to Pluto? Oh, I don't know. Anyway. Um, improve morale by saying that Pluto should have been the ninth planet. Sure. Uh, we always knew it was there. It was only a matter of time. Uh, the pictures look fabricated. Gain science. Uh, I mean, I'm just going to improve. I'm just going to improve morale. Turns out ignorance is a good thing. Yep. <laughs> All right, that's fun. Hey, look, trees. Oh, we actually are making this into a green planet. That's fantastic. 
All right, how are we doing in the underground? Ooh, the dome is already built. Okay. Oh, wait, I need to go find a name for this. Hang on. Actually, you know what? I know exactly what I'm going to name this. L'Anglais. There we go. It's L'Angle. There we go. Perfect. Okay, he gets to be my underground dome. So, we should have a few things that I can construct down here thanks to some prefabs. Specifically thinking, uh, I thought I brought down a couple apartment buildings. Apparently I did not. We should have, at the very least, a farm and stuff we can place down here. And yes, you can actually farm things in the underground. It's a little weird, but it's definitely a thing that can happen. I'm going to set these to cover crops and get the automation going, followed by fruit trees and giant corn. And this will easily sustain whatever population we end up sending down into this area. Okay, now we should have things like our apartments. Also, I placed down a water reclamation system. Interesting. Okay, I did not know this. The underground domes do not allow for spires. Oh, well, that's sad. Oh, well, I've got it if we ever change your mind. Um, apartments. We'll go ahead and place down a couple of these. Of course, we will turn these into nice little home collectives. I also brought along things like a grocer as well as an infirmary and a diner just because I know people are going to get antsy about having some of their creature comforts. And um, I don't expect I'm going to have a very large population here, so sure, let's go ahead and also build up our own security station, plus, let's say, an amphitheater, and what else might I want? We could just have some simple parks, I suppose, or how about a space bar? Sure, space bar. Let's just go ahead and have people get their alcohol content out of the way. What I don't want to allow is any children to be born down here, because I think that will get a little bit problematic. I'm not going to have any schools and stuff, and I don't want kids growing up in the underground. I want them to see the sun! Okay, we have water, we have oxygen, I'm gonna get some jobs in these metal extractors, we have service bots taking care of all of this. So for the most part, people are going to get to live a life of beautiful leisure. There's actually not a whole lot to do down in the underground right now, except perhaps start working on the bottomless pit lab. All right, so here it is. It should be in range of my dome. It's gonna take a lot of minerals, lots of electronics, lots of metals. But we're almost ready. In the meantime, I think we can go ahead and start bringing some colonists down to the planet. Or the underground. We're already on the planet. You get the point! Alright, let's go ahead and request some of the elevator. This should be exciting for us all, yeah? We have a lot of people who need jobs. This is your opportunity of a lifetime. It's great. Let's go down here and say I want to bring along, first off, four botanists. And then maybe, like, eight geologists. And then, I don't really know what else we could possibly want. How about a couple of medics, to be safe? And maybe a couple of officers? And for now, I say that this is probably all that I want. Just a few people. We have only- we have no specialized people? Unspecialized? No, we do. We have 91. Never mind. Um, yeah, so this will be fine. Let's go ahead and send all these guys down. So they should be on the way. The shuttles, of course, do have to bring them along. Game, please don't crash on me. Game? Uh-oh. This is a bad sign. No, 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 no! No, we're working again. Okay. Huh, phew. <laughs> Got a little concerned because some people have reported that there are the occasional um, crashes surrounding some things like moving people down into the uh, underground. But it looks like we are going to get to avoid all of that nonsense. Okay. Things are looking real good down over here. Look how many trees we got. We're so happy. Happy little trees. Bob Ross would be very, very proud. All right, down to the underground. The shuttles should be able to do the job. Are people arriving? Yes, we have 18 people that are going to be moving in. They are arriving as of now. Excellent. Let's go ahead and turn this thing on, set this to cover crops, then to the fruit trees and the giant corn again. And people should start working over here as soon as they do arrive and are ready to go. Uh, I don't know why all of my bio uh, biologists decided to go work there. That's obviously not what I want. Top priority, please go take your jobs. Hello? Is anyone going to go work down here? Not enough workers? We have enough workers. Where are they? Workers! Hey! Go do things! I know you're here! I saw you! Hang on. I think they may all get stuck on this or something. Well, they'll figure it out eventually. There we go. There we go. Alright, now we're set. 100% uh, water terraforming is complete on the planet. Alright, that's another 5,000 research for me. Not that I need it, but that's pretty cool. We did, by the way, get another breakthrough tech, Magnetic Extraction, which just gets another 50% production, which is ludicrous. So now, we actually will be able to produce so many metals down here, we could start sending some back up to the surface if I wanted to. Pretty crazy, right? Yeah, I think so. And everyone else should be looking fine. So I want to check. Maintenance over here. We talked about this. Let's just see. Trip Electric Scrubbers. If I were to place you right over, let's say, here. And then maybe another one, let's say, right up over here. I'd like to play this, this in the range of things like the fusion reactor, because that obviously reduces maintenance costs by a bit more. 
So we'll place down two of those. And let's see if these things actually work in reducing the maintenance so I can save me a bunch of exotic minerals over here. Oh, I know where we're having trouble with some of our jobs. Okay, this is an annoyance. Um, you apparently can send seniors down here. Quantum Picard, what a name. You sent a child? Who sent a child down here? Good lord. Um, yeah, I... I don't want to send seniors down here, because they're not going to be very effective and working very well. So why do we do that? All right, well... We apparently have seniors who decided they want to live out the rest of their years in the underground. Also this child. The child is not supposed to be here. But interestingly enough... No, you can't do filters here. I want to say that children aren't allowed to live here. But the problem is, where are they going to go? Right? So, I got to somehow find a way to send these guys back up to the surface, specifically. And I think there is a way to do that. Let me just double check real quick. No filters I can do here. So, my question then, if I were to take, let's say, this child, right? Then I go over here and say, I assign you to the elevator. Will you automatically go and leave? And the answer might be yes. Let's find out for sure. If so, what happens to them? I hope they get reassigned to a new home. Three unemployed people. Does not look like the child leaves. So once you have children down here, you're kind of stuck, is what it turns out. Mmm, okay. Not, not happy about that. What we can do, though, is at least say a non-specialized person needs to go back up to the surface. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. The child counts as non-specialized. A second child. I just forbade... No, I haven't. I, I didn't forbid births. Never mind! Um, but now, please stop having children down here. Gosh dang it. Why did we send pregnant women down into the underground? This is the new frontier, guys! This is untested! Don't send pregnant women down here! Whatever happened to protecting the women's? And by the way, yes, it does look like these triple electric scrubbers do reduce some of the maintenance necessary in these things. If we expand you out like this, for example, we're gonna start seeing this start going down whenever this thing pulses again. Which should be right about now. Yep, there we go. Alright, so using triple electric scrubbers actually will greatly reduce the number of exotic minerals you require in order to sustain an uh, underground base. Very good to know. Uh, we need a lot more metals, and we need a lot more electronics. I can arrange that. Oh, this is something I did not know. Wait a minute. Colonists have to march all the way over... Wait, what's going on? Why do I... I think these people actually weren't getting shuttle transported. They had to walk the whole way. I've had some deaths. Oh, wait, what? Wait, why do we have 40 people here? Wait, did people just automatically move down here despite the fact that I didn't tell them to do that on the elevator? Uh-oh. Okay, well, now we're getting full and people died on the trek. Uh-huh, so we've got unemployment issues even in the dang undergrounds now. That's great. Up, oh, bottomless pit lab is getting built up. Here we go. We're finally gonna find out what happens with this mystery. It's only been for most the entire campaign. <laughs> many, many hours have we tried to figure out what is going on over here in the bottomless pit. Which, by the way, I mean, this is, this is pretty dark and bottomless, ain't it? Actually, it looks like it has a bottom right here. What am I talking about? That looks like it has a bottom. Hey. Whoa. All right, we got an achievement. Mysteries of Mars. I can have people go work over here, and we have a lot of extra workers, so I guess we'll do that. Um... So what we can do, first off, this is all very tiny font. I don't know what happened here. It must be connected to power. That's fine. Uh, does take mineral uh, minerals in order to maintain, but that's why I'm placing down another one of these triple electric scrubbers. So I'm thinking this is going to be a non-issue at some point. Um, all right, so we got power now. What I think we do is literally just toss resources into this, and it just starts generating research, which you can see... Building performance is up here. We could probably increase that a bit if we wanted to have people overworking. Insufficient power. Really? We should be producing enough power. Production, total demands. Now we got plenty of power. We just haven't finished building up this cable, apparently. I thought we built cables instantly. There we go. Now we got power. All right. So it's generating a tiny bit of research, and every time we literally just toss things down into a hole... <laughs> When you literally toss things down the hole, the gods of Mars give you research. <laughs> okay. No, that's, um, that's, that's kind of funny. I'll just toss some waste rock and stuff down there, and maybe some metals, since I'm pretty sure we're going to be overproducing thanks to this metals extractor. Though I think it's debatable whether that makes any sense to do. I think for now, just waste rock. Um, but the more things you toss down, the more research we get. So, okay, M uh, mystery solved, I guess. We have our bottomless pit lab, ladies and gentlemen. 
The funny thing is, by the time that we actually can build this, we're so far ahead on research, I have no use for it. So it's a pretty pointless building at this point, but we did it! And by the way, I figured out, no, I don't think people do automatically come down the elevator. When I requested just two extra botanists, I didn't realize I actually had um, requested an entire new roster from the first time that I requested people. So we have a lot more folks working down here than I originally had been expecting. I can probably go ahead and send some of these guys back home. We did not need anywhere near this. But at the same time, I kind of like the idea that we got 40 people that are currently living underground. That's kind of exciting, isn't it? Um, it's not going to be that much longer, I think, until we are able to get up to a 90% uh, atmosphere, at which point I think we open up all of the domes. Another thing we can do, um, maybe, is to uh, go and start building out like a giant colossal uh, dome, which could be a fun project. Let's see if we can work on that. And now we're at 100% temperature, thanks to a new space mirror, kind of redirecting the sun over to our planet. So all that's really left then is getting that atmosphere way up there. Okay, solid progress. And this is where we'll be placing a new Geoscape Dome, which is currently under construction. This thing increases sanity the longer people are in it, but also I place it next to three vistas. So it should have an unbelievable amount of comfort, not to mention some research. 20% boost over here. Not that I need that either, but it's kind of cool that we can do this thing. And the Geoscape Dome is done. Boom. We're going to name this one Indigo Phoenix. Right at the very end. The big, beautiful one with lots of rocks. Also evidence against dark matter. Now let them figure it out. I don't care. All right. Here's a huge dome. Um, can we place a spire in this? I actually don't know. Can you? Yeah, you can. All right. That's good. Uh, we will place, just for the heck of it, a hanging gardens in here to make things extra, extra beautiful. I have no need for this dome. This was just a fun thing that we were able to do. Uh, now we gotta get life support set up over here as well. Hey, we've hit 95%, which means the planet is now officially habitable. All right, everyone, open up the domes. Whoosh. Okay. And just like that, all of our domes are now open to the beautiful clear blue skies of Mars. Nice, comfortable temperature, plenty of moisture, only lacking a bit in vegetation, but we have made solid progress on that front. And then, of course, yeah, we have our dome down in the underground, which appears to still be thriving just fine over here. Plenty of resources to go around. The bottomless pit lab is having a whole load of fun. And while there are certainly still some Mars quakes to be concerned about, for the most part, we should be safe in all the areas that I care about. So I would say that this was a very successful run. We accomplished everything we wanted to, and we got to explore all of the new content. Now, as far as my thoughts on the new expansion, it doesn't really change the way that you play the game too much, uh, at least until the late game. It is nice to have an extra source of resources um, in the asteroids and underground, because usually at some point on the surface, you do kind of run out of things and your colony eventually does die. So this gives you another lifeline, and it's certainly nice to do that. And it is fun to be able to go to space. The only problem is, in order to make it cost-effective to go to the underground or to go into space, you already have to have accomplished so much research and have such a stable economy that you won't really benefit from going to either for a while. So that's why I'm saying it doesn't really change the game. You still need to play primarily on the surface, and then if you want to have an extra late-game accolade, then you can do something like that that you won't necessarily need it. It's fun in that it adds more to do. It just doesn't change up much. Other than that, though, I think it's certainly fun, and we had a great time in New Ulm. Our colony is extremely prosperous. The people are very happy. All is going well. Guys, I hope you all enjoyed this series, because I certainly know that I enjoyed recording it. If you did enjoy, please be sure to hit that like button. Make sure you leave a comment showing your support. Subscribe and hit that notify bell to be notified of my future stuff. My name is Promise, and I will see you guys next time.